Hey Foundation, Steve Carter here, and thank you. Just thanks for being the kind of church that really would put such an anthem in your front yard. Love everyone always. Thanks for being the kind of church that would gather in living rooms and coffee shops and um, homes and even here in the church just to talk about what it means to literally love everyone always. And, and this weekend, if you were there, you obviously heard me talk about the story, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And oftentimes we, we get this story so wrong. Um, we think about time, like it, the priest and the Levite didn't have time. They were too busy. Um, when truth is, it, it was about how they ranked the laws. I taught you how the priest and the Levite they, they followed Rabbi Shammai. And they believed that the two greatest commandments were love God and to be holy as God is holy. But a Samaritan, someone who didn't have the pedigree, the schooling, the opportunity to study Torah, even he got it. He understood, like Rabbi Hillel, 50 years before the, the days of Jesus said, the two greatest commands are to love God and to love your neighbor. And so what I thought I would do is a little bit different. I love what Frank did a couple weeks ago. Um, and I, I love just these opportunities. But one of the things I thought about is I just wanted to talk for a moment about the question and then just kind of just kind of unpack it. I'll say it. It's not like you got to hit pause right then and, and answer the question. Then you can listen to the whole thing. But I do feel like these questions will hopefully be helpful for you as you engage with doing the hard work doing what Jesus did for us, loving us when we didn't deserve it, loving us when we literally were going a different direction, loving us when, truth be told, we were enemies of God. That, that's how Paul writes about it in the book of Romans. Like we, we were enemies of God's goodness, of God's character, of God's vision for what humanity would be. And God still came after us. And he invites us to go and do likewise. So here's the first question. And the first question, uh, I, ta I told you about the 613 laws from the Torah and how rabbis ranked them differently. What would you say the greatest commandment is? Love your neighbor as yourself or be holy as God is holy in regards to how you actually live your life? I know for me personally, uh, I want it to be to love my neighbor. Um, but if my neighbor is just people who like me and like the things that I like, um, I'm pretty good at that. But if it's loving the people who have hurt me, um, loving the people who have wronged me, I'm probably more in line with Shammai, to be holy as God is holy, to kind of be seen as good. Um, and sometimes can understand, like if I go there, it's, that's, that's, gonna, that's gonna create a scene or that's gonna make people think or make people wonder. And so I think too much of my life is really following the ways of Shammai and not the ways of Jesus. And that's where this passage just hit me this week. What about for you? The second question was, are you someone driven by keeping your options open by someone, or driven by someone else's expectations or specific priorities for how you live your life? Share with the group this reason why. And, and remember, if you, I was telling you there's the expert of the law in the talk. And that guy, like, he was like just trying to get all the right answers. If he had all the right answers, then maybe he would literally like do what Jesus was asking him to do. But he kept his options open. And we've probably all been in relationships where people kept their options open or put conditions. The priests and Levites, all tradition and expectations. Uh, they, they wanted to live up to people's expectations. They didn't want anybody to think down on them. They just followed tradition. Tradition became their Id Id idol. Expectations became their God. But somehow when we get closer and closer to Jesus, we have to literally practice and put into practice what he taught us. 
And that's to love even our enemies. What about you? You more a keep your options open kind of person? No shade on that. Are you kind of a person that's about, man, just expectations, traditions? Or someone who's saying, no, I'm about the priorities of Jesus no matter what. No matter what anybody says. Third question. In Jesus' day, the term Samaritan was a derogatory term. But Jesus made that word now synonymous with good. Is there a metaphorical Samaritan in your life? Now, I'm not asking you to share their name because they might be in your small group. Hopefully not. But here's what I want you to think about. Can you imagine if that person became synonymous with good? How would that make you feel? Can you imagine God looking at that person and saying, I can do good work in them. How would you honestly feel about that? I'd love for you to kind of spend some time sharing about that in the group. Fourth question, loving everyone always means loving even the people you dislike, can't stand, and even hate. Share a time with a group where you were able to love someone who didn't deserve it like Jesus loved you. One of my closest friends, uh, his his aunt was brutally murdered in California. This happened over 40 years ago. And uh, she was murdered by her husband. He had a little side life, um, side woman, side family. And he ended this beautiful young woman's life. He finally gets caught. He goes to prison. And my buddy's telling me that like his parents can't forgive this man for what he did to his aunt. Which in some ways makes sense. I think I would have a hard time forgiving But my friend Mike is like, I just keep reading God's word and I feel like I'm supposed to write this guy a letter. So my friend writes him a letter and two weeks ago, a letter comes from prison from this man. He's never talked to him. The man in prison got saved. The man in prison who murdered my buddy's aunt has had his life totally turned upside down. And my friend's like, I don't know what to do with this. It's like something good is now taking place in this man's life. And I'm watching my friend go, literally just like almost slowing it all down to say, Jesus, how am I supposed to love? Teach me how to love. Teach me how to love this person who brought so much pain into my family. And... It's a slow process. It's a messy process. My friend had to go to his parents and say, hey, I wrote this guy a letter and he wrote me back. And they've been able to start chopping it up about that. And I think this is the stuff of like where faith gets deeper and stronger because we're like rubbing shoulders with conflict and struggle. And really what this idea of loving everyone always is truly all about. It's not like love everyone sometimes or love everyone if they look like you or love everyone if they haven't hurt you. Love everyone always encompasses every single person. And the last question, if the priest and Levite ranked the laws differently than Jesus did, what rule or personal belief goes in the way from you loving your neighbor well? I was talking to a friend recently about this and they said uh, growing up that they're probably their number one law or commandment or mitzvot. Remember that was the Hebrew word, the sacred deed was to love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind. But then number two was around a political party and all of what that stood for. And he just, he just said like, I, I, a neighbor was just people who really were aligned themselves with me. And anybody who didn't align themselves with me, I just thought were stupid, nothing to offer, and I just didn't want to deal with them. And this is this older gentleman, you know, in his 60s, and it's like he's almost discovering the kingdom of God again. 
And he just began to recognize that, oh man, who Jesus loves is, is everyone always. And the invitation is to love everyone always. But I, I just wonder for you, if it was love the Lord God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, what's the second most important? What's the second most? I think for me personally, um, this is probably not even like a, it's not one of the 613. I think too often I put too much priority in my own personal security. Um, too often I think I live with too much scarcity. Too often um, I wonder if there's enough good to go around. Too often I, I, I literally can say I love God with all my heart, my soul, my mind, but I got to just take care of myself. And that's out of my own like family trauma, but that's something that, no, it's hard to look out for your neighbor when you're only looking out for you. And I feel like Jesus has been teaching me that in new and fresh ways over the last five years. Um, but I think that's how I probably would um, say that was my second greatest commandment. What about you? Friends, I love the story of the Good Samaritan because I think it plays especially in the environment and culture that we're living in right now. But if we're going to be the kind of people that Jesus wants, the kind of Talmudim, apprentices, students, disciples of Jesus, we got to put ourselves in situations where we love like he loved, where we go after people like he went after us. And we put ourselves in moments where we don't depend on our own strength, but we depend on his strength, which is truly greater than all of us combined. Love you, Foundations. Hope you have a great, great conversation. Great to see you.